Hey, good afternoon. It's starting to cool down finally. It's getting into September, you know. Guess what our music is, you know. It's a little buck of white, you know. You hear that? Buck of white. I'm going to give you a link below. This is from the Doxy recording. I'll give you a link to that. And uh, an iCard as well, so you can just listen to it right away. Buck of white. Now, sooner or later, people get away from cigar boxes and start getting into everybody wants to build a license plate guitar uh, but once you get used to boxes this is a whole new beast you got to make your own box try to find a cigar box that will hold this it's just a hassle so the last a couple of episodes I've been doing product reviews and I've got a good one for you this time it takes the hassle of this and tames it and check this out this is a kit that has all the wood cut like so and the most important part is look at that the license plate drops right in there so I'm gonna build a guitar using this kit and we're gonna see the good and the bad and the ugly about it hopefully everything will work out so let's hit the bench almost forgot as always the housekeeping end of the uh, episode you're gonna see my email address send me your comments and questions and your suggestions for something you want to see in a future episode we got the subscribe and the playlist button so one more time back to the bench okay a couple of things I want to show you first is you're gonna to want to make sure that your license plate is in the right orientation so if this is a right hand guitar I'm probably gonna turn it this way so it's not upside down now this kit is uh, presents a difference to me because I always have uh, my tailpiece sticking out because you know how I uh, mount my strings with and ground everything. I think you've seen that a bunch of times in a different episode and I'll give you a link to that about how to ground and, and, and put uh, tension pins in this tailpiece. But I always have this sticking out. The way this kit is built, it doesn't... I guess you're supposed to just put the neck in here and end it here and use some kind of a bridge piece right here. Um, I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to have to do is you can see here I've marked this. Uh, I've found the center of it using uh, the metric system. Let's flip that around like so. Mark the center piece. And so the first thing I'm going to do is start cutting the um, a groove here so I can have my neck in the right spot now something else I have to think about is the length of this box is longer than uh, most of the Camacho boxes that I deal with so I'm gonna do a 25 and a half scale uh, guitar here uh, meaning that from the knot the top of the knot to where the bridge goes is gonna be 25 and a half inches and I'm gonna want that to be here so I'm gonna have to do some measuring on the neck and stuff so I'm about ready to cut my scarf joint and do what I usually do and then once that's all put together and I've got my head stocked on and this all glued up then I'm gonna have to do some measurements now I ordered a fingerboard from a different supplier and it's wide enough to use on a six string so what I've done here is I've measured this like so and found the center and then mark this here and I'm gonna cut this down you can see that I've put let's get some light in there you can see I put pencil marks to straighten this out anyway I've got some measuring to do and some cutting to do on that box and then we'll catch up and see how I'm doing okay guys I'm stopping along the way here every once in a while while I'm building this to kind of show you what I'm doing I um, glued up neck last night and um, let me get these clamps out of the way here I don't pick my stuff up it will be a mess before I know it but anyway I did um, the scarf joint and um, glued on the second board it'll it'll come out of the box a, a little bit I'm gonna round this off and everything but I've cut the line down where I'm going to route some of these sections off 
here so the the top of this box is pretty thick so now what I'm doing is I'm figuring out where things are going to line up and what I need to route out because I don't need to route this whole section out but more so just where the box is so I'll route out from here to here and then here to here this short section that will set this box down now since the license plate is really flat this is going to sit right on top of the the neck so there won't be much room here again i haven't built one of these before like this and so i've got some work to do about where i'm going to cut this off and also where my bridge is going to end up because it's going to be i'm going to use a bone knot and so my bridge is going to be about right here i'm gonna put a little reference mark nothing scientific there but my bridge is going to end up right in the middle of the cowboy and his horse like that so i'm going to use my typical floating bridge now i'm going to use one of these flat uh, pickups so i'm going to have to put this down in here somewhere around the eight or so now you'll notice that this is magnetic and I'm going to find a way to isolate this or insulate this from the metal around it. So that should be pretty easy. I'll have to also cut down wherever that's going to go into the neck just a tad to make sure uh, that the height is right. Anyway, let me get some more of this done and I will catch you up in the next clip. Okay, I wanted to check in real quick here and kind of show you what I've done. I... Um, cut down the fingerboard and now I'm taking the clamps off of it I used um, pieces of uh, cut off um, neck wood cut off here to bolt this down you get those hung up let's take a look at this here yeah, so I've got some work to do on the sides there of some sanding and stuff to do. Um, but what I'm showing you here is the fingerboard extends over into the top of the box here. And then what I've done is I've routed this out. Now, I'm going to route it down a little bit more because... I need that to drop down just a tad more uh, here because I'm going to use one of these floating bridges uh, in this area here and it's still going to be up a little too high. Now when I route this down a tad more what's going to happen is it's going to bring this part up a tad higher. Um, and the license plate will want to bow up so I'm not going to gain anything by doing that unless I route this whole thing down like so uh, and I'll show you what that looks like now what I do want to show you is I got some pretty cool matchbooks that are going to go on the neck again I'll scan these but we got a guitar and a dude ranch that's a nice one XO dude ranch cowboy cigarette service that's pretty socially inappropriate now and then of course the million dollar cowboy bar so that's what will go on the neck i also got a um a joker card for the headstock that's cowboy themed so let me get this done and i'll check in in a bit okay i rounded that out a little bit more yeah, I'm just making sure everything's nice and flat there um you want to remember to always put your do some calculating how thick your board is going to be because if this were all you had and not this of course i'm going to cut the end off here and and do my tension pins but if you didn't have this right and you were trying to put a guitar together and glue to the top this would be a weak spot and it would uh, bow and everything anyway so you always want to make sure you do that now i can do a little bit more sanding here which will, i will do but this sits down in this pocket now the fingerboard 
is considerably up from where it had been. Let's see if I can get this in the camera here. See, so that's going to give me plenty of room for uh, my floating bridge. Uh, but where the license plate goes, you can see here. Let me get this in the camera. This part is now sticking up above where the license plate seats. So I'm going to make a mark right here, and then I'm going to have to route the whole length of this neck here down to here. I'm going to run this through the router and take all that off quick so everything sits nice. This will be down here like so. I remember me doing it the way I do it with the tension pins and this piece sticking out is probably making it more difficult than it needs to be. But anyway, that's how I do it. Um, again, you could always uh, end the neck inside the box here and have everything work out just as well. But that's how I do it. All right, we're going to be making some noise here. But I've got the pocket um, for the top of the box cover cut out. Uh, I've got this flattened out. This is the part where uh, the license plate will sit and this other pocket. And I've got the neck um, fingerboard done. And so now it's time to smooth both sides of that out. So let's hit the belt center and see what I can do. I want you to notice up here on the top of the belt center, let me move the camera up just a little bit. The way I've got the neck shaped and everything, watch when I'm sanding this, I'm going up and down and making sure I get everything. And then when I get to here, I'm going to make sure that this is smoothed out. So this radius on the neck matches this perfectly. Let's take a look. There, that's pretty good now I'll work the other side and I'll uh, get this radius a bit and also do the same thing down here now I want to show you this part a little bit right here I've already started this but again anytime you can use the radius of your sander to set how smooth something is you want to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this ride down here like this and I'm going to let it work back and forth until this rounds this off right here so let's have a look at that Now I've shown you guys how to fret before. I'll put a link up to the episode, but I'm using medium-high nickel silver fret wire. Again, we've seen this on some other videos. I'm going to nip that end at an angle like so. I'm going to put it on the fret slot. I'm going to tap that side down. I'm going to turn this up and get as close as I can snap that off and you notice the way I snap that off our angles cut for the next fret already and then I want to make sure this is right underneath here and I tap that down like so march down the fingerboard and then I'll put my matchbooks on There's the last one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 frets on this one. Uh, that's a little bit shorter than I'm used to, but that's okay. Most of the action is up here on the 12th and 14th. Anyway, while I'm here, these 8-inch section, sections of fret wire 
is how they come before you start cutting them. Uh, about 20 centimeters. You need about four and a half of these to do a complete neck of uh, a few less than on this shorter neck. But there it is. I'm going to take and work these down and I'll check in in a bit. Okay, things are looking pretty good here. I've got enough space uh, over where the license plate is going to sit. My frets take it up just a tad more. So when I put this down, I'm going to flatten this plate out a little bit. And, and I've got a mark right there where the bridge is going to be. So I should be plenty good here. Um, the one thing that I figured out is rather than running a screw through these um, tabs where the license plate bolt typically goes, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these gadgets and it's a threaded, I'm not sure what you call it, but you drill a hole that's just a tad bigger than this and then you run this from underneath and it's got uh, places for screws like you would typically use to mount your tuners or something. But anyway, I'm going to drill that through, affix it to the bottom and then I'm going to run this nut through here I may use a small washer or something like that but then when I put it on uh, once this is through the plate it will screw on like that and I'll be able to take this on and off really easily using that method if you're using a screw and you have to get in and out uh, several times the next thing you know your holes stripped out but this is a pretty good gadget available at most hardware stores Okay guys, let me catch you up on a couple of things here. You'll remember that this plate sits down in here. I've done some staining and some I blackened this out so it looks better here. Uh, but anyway, you'll remember that I wanted to use T nuts here to put these plates on. So that's just basically, it looks like this. You've got one of these down into a drilled hole and then there's holes in it for the same size screws uh, you would use to put tuners on a neck or something. And then it's just simply taking your drill and drilling a shallow hole like so, and then putting your small screws in. All right, there we go. Just like that, I can flip it over now. And when I put my bolt through the license plate it will sit right down in here i can tighten it up i don't have to worry about it stripping out or anything like that over time works way better than a screw trust me a couple other things i want to show you i cut a hole in the license plate i know that's criminal but i'm going to be using this flat pickup here you've seen these on my other guitars it cannot touch the metal plate that's not going to be good for sound so i'm going to use some caulking there uh, in a black color to go around the edges here now if you don't have a plasma cutter to cut this out or something and you have to do it by hand always stay inside uh your line when you're making your rough cuts because it's harder <laughs> it's easier to go out further than it is to try and fix something that's too big now i'm going to show you a handy little trick i got my arsenal this is a sander it's got a little half inch belt on it and you can use this on corners like so you just turn it over or even if you're notching out box lids like so it gets right into corners like that like this and like that this is about a 30 dollars tool that's going to save you a lot of headache all right, I want to point out that the wood started off this color, a very light color. Uh, that looks good if you want to do that. But I decided I want to weather it um, so you can see here that there's this kind of dirty uh, grayish looking thing here. And so um, I did that by using this weathered gray stain. It's got polyurethane in it. So when I, I dip the paper towel in it and then just wipe this way and try to stay with the grain i did two coats of that and it worked out pretty good i think that's a nice contrast all right as always i'm going to put box corners on this uh, it protects everything just in case uh, but i didn't really like the chrome look so i took these to a belt sander ground them down by the way i got these at a discount because uh, they came in scratch so i got a good deal on a bunch of these and i took them ground them down on a belt sander roughed them up 
and then put uh, painted them black so I think that's going to give me a lot nicer look so what I'll do when I get all these on and mounted is I'll just scuff these up a little bit that tad bit of metal will shine through here and there and then I'll coat it and it'll look good it'll give it a rustic look okay a couple of things I want to tell you about the neck uh, I stained uh, the lighter wood part of the neck not the fingerboard I got this dark fingerboard here but I stained it using the same uh, weathered gray so it'll match the top of the box there we go there's the camera and um, as always Tammy signed it uh, I had the finish put on and her signed it before I drilled the holes for the tuners now the front uh, of the neck here I am going to use this graphic it goes along with everything this uh, cowboy joker card okay I've got a little small bit here and I've got these pieces of fret markers. This one's about done here. You can see it there in my hand. I just drilled the hole. I put that in there like that. I take my hammer. I tap it down just a tad. I take a saw, a flush cut saw, and cut it off like so. And then I just take a file, run that over there. I put them at 3, 5, 7, and 12. And then as always on the 12th fret, right below the 12th fret, I've cut uh, a hole in with a Forstner bit that will accept this nickel. So it's 2018 nickel. I'll epoxy it right in there. Uh, when you're sliding this, when you get to the 12th fret, that's an indicator for you. But this guitar is going into a raffle for the Vasquez High School Fall Festival on the 20th of October. Uh, you can buy a raffle ticket and hope you win this thing, but whoever wins this will be able to remember that. I won this in 19... 2018. I'm lost. I'm a decade behind. 2018 when Ken Falls Graf was elected to the school board again. Get it? Okay, guys, I want to show you what I've done here. I've measured off uh, the edges of the box, found the center, and then came uh, equidistant off the center between the edge of the box and the center to find these holes. So I've drilled all the way down through the box side here, all the way down. And then I'm using these galvanized screws because they go better with the theme. And after drilling a pilot hole, I use this bit to go all the way through. It's nice and windy out today. That's why everything's rattling. It's always windy here. But then I'm taking a countersink here and giving each one of these holes a little bit of that. Bear with me while I change bits here. And I've set the clutch way down here so I don't strip these out. But now I'm just running these down through the sides like that. And of course, once I get everything together, I'll turn those the way I want them. But um, this is how I am putting the box together where I can still take everything apart later if I need to. And I'll just pull this tape off and those go nice with that. Of course, I'll make sure that everything's lining up because I'm just that way. But that goes good with everything and kind of matches with everything. There's a phone call. Okay, guys, this is not pretty, but uh, on the inside, but it looks okay out here. I've got a tailpiece to put down here. Uh, but what I've done is I found uh, a line here to put bolt the neck. Uh, down to the top of the box like I usually do this time it's through the license plate on the inside you can see how it's turned out I'm going to use uh, nylon insert uh, nuts here to hold everything together I'll make sure that these are right so the box bottom goes on um, and now I'm going to start thinking about putting my uh, volume control my jack and my uh, pins for my guitar strap all right guys 
Um, I'm getting down into the wiring now and the soldering. I, I took a little piece of this metal here and made a tab here. I've put all kinds of copper tape on here. Uh, I've got the tail piece and the copper tape will ground the strings uh, through there. I'll run all my grounds here. You notice I use coated wire uh, like this. It'll come out of here and go to the jack. I've also uh, got my solder iron fired up and the bottom of my potentiometer tinned and ready to accept wire. Okay, we got the crow squawking in the background. We got the buck of white back on. Everything's good. Everything is soldered up. Got the jack here. Uh, got the wires all put away, wound up in a nice little loom here. Everything is soldered up. I made a little tab out of Made in USA ball canning lid uh, to keep this from bouncing around. Everything is good here. Uh, time to seal it up. Okay, I got the bottom board here. Um, it's got its corners on uh, just like the top. And what I've done here is I've used these coated uh, screws just like on the top. The top ones come down through here. And then I've measured off the centers where there's not going to be a conflict. And uh, countersunk the holes for this. And then I just run these down like so. And they just sit right there and I've got six holes in the bottom and everything will seal up nice. All right, let's do the final flyby. We got the uh, floating bridge. We got the flat uh, electric pickup, box corners. I really like these matchbooks. They're all cowboy themed, most out of Wyoming. And there's that headstock. Again, cowboy themed. Four string. I've got it tuned G, D, G, D. And now I kind of want to give you a couple of shout outs. First off, this guitar here is going to be in a raffle uh, to benefit Vasquez High School in Acton, California. So get on a plane, get on a train, get in your car and get out here. And then finally, we want to remember this started off with a kit. Uh, this box started off as a kit. And it's made to accept a license plate. Now, I'm going to give you a link to that below. And it comes from MGB. So I'll give you a link below. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It would have taken me quite a bit of effort to cut all this and do it. Um, and it was really easy to work with. So shout out to MGB. Uh, thanks for letting me test this out. Now, I took this guitar to Long Beach the other night and met up with my friend, Colin and Cameron from Smokestack Relics and we're going to close out this episode with them playing this guitar. See you next time.